All right, welcome back YouTube. I want to do an update video on just kind of covering the stuff that we're seeing now with the, uh, the Fed meeting and the CPI numbers and why the market is rallying. I'm gonna go over some of the key points, um, kind of what happened, what we uh, were able to grasp on the numbers and the report. And I'm gonna weigh in as far as what I think this means and where I think we're um, headed. And can just give you my uh, interpretation of the, uh, the data. So, for the beginning here, let's let me do this. Um, so pretty much what we had is we had um, it pretty much like a, the numbers come in flat and year over year with kind of um, just kind of trending underneath what the expectations were. Uh, so the U.S. October CPI year over year was 3.2 percent versus the 3.3 percent forecast. Uh, prior to that, it was 3.7 uh, U.S. October CPI month over month was 0% versus 0.1% forecast. Prior to that was a 0.4%. So what we have is uh, kind of just beating uh, barely um, these, these numbers out. And typically that means that the economy is uh, trending in a positive direction or trending in the direction that the uh, Fed wants it to go, which is ultimately to get uh, inflation down, right? So uh, we're looking at US October core CPI year over year 4.3%. 4 yeah, 4% versus 4.1% uh, forecast. U.S. October core CPI month over month, 0.2% versus 0.3%. So pretty much we're coming in under in all categories. So that's why you're seeing like the market kind of take off um, because this is being viewed as um, as good news. And, and pretty much the consumer price index um, was flat in October from the previous month, but increased 3.2% from a year ago. And don't worry, guys, I'm going to put this in the comment section on the channel if you want to read over these notes. So I'll I'll um, place a, uh, a copy there so that you can kind of read them for yourself. But um, both were well below on Wall Street estimates, sparking a major rally on Wall Street. Uh, excluding the volatile food and energy prices, the core CPI rose 0.2% at 4% against the forecast of 0.3% at 4.1%. The annual rate was the smallest increase since September 2021. So we're talking about um, a, a very nominal adjustment in the last two years. And I think we can all agree that food <laughs> and energy prices are certainly uh, still uh, up there as far as for some of the other areas. And I don't really believe that we're seeing a decrease. I think we're more so seeing a stabilization, but we'll we'll get into that in a moment. The flat reading on the headline CPI uh, came as energy prices declined 2.5% for the month, offsetting a 0.3% increase in the food index. Uh, following the report, traders took any potential Fed rate hikes almost completely off the table, according to CME Group data. And that is the biggest thing right there, right? Um, they took uh, the, how this is being interpreted as the rate hikes are off the table. We are now uh, turning in the right direction. It's all gravy train from here. We're coasting into the bull market, right? And I think that is um, it's an interesting perspective. Like, I'm not saying that um, inflation is still uh, as, as bad as it was during like peak COVID and stuff like that, or rather peak COVID. But I think that what we are overlooking here, because you guys know who follow the channel, I'm big on macros. And what we're uh, overlooking here is, yes, we're comparing these numbers to year over year and forecast. Now, if uh, if you compare at the peak, let's say October 2022 20, was 10% inflation, right? This is an example, mad, mad inflation, 10%. And then year over year, you'll say, you'll come back and you'll say inflation is now 7%. And technically you're comparing it. You're saying we came in three points under year over year. So, you know, we're headed in the right direction. So that gets interpreted as positive news. And we're kind of just like taking off from there and saying, okay, this is great. Um, we are headed in the right direction, right? And then you have, let's say that following year, it comes in at let's say 6.5%. So it's a 0.5% difference, a little nominal, but you are, you know, you're not increasing anymore, which is good, but you're kind of stabilizing like around that point. And I think that's kind of similar to what we're seeing right here. We're seeing these very nominal uh, coming in like a 10th of a point um, below some of the expectations and stuff like that. And this being interpreted saying that, okay, yeah, there's not going to be any more rate hikes, but I think that what we also had to kind of, kind of get into the, uh, I, I guess get used to is that a lot of these prices that we're seeing are the new norm. Like, cause I, I don't want, I know typically people be like, Oh, when things are going to get back to normal. And once inflation comes down, prices are going to come down. No, no, not, not exactly. Right. So we have these increases prices stabilize therefore, cause you have to kind of keep in mind the way they calculate these numbers and uh, uh, an asset can increase by a hundred percent in 2021. 
And the next year, if it doesn't increase anymore, uh, that'll be technically a 0% move, right? So the, even though it doubled in the last two years, the way they're calculating these numbers are, it's saying that, oh, okay, well, it's still the same price. Therefore, inflation is stable. It does not necessarily mean that it goes back to its previous number. So if it's $2 and it doubles to $4 and it maintains itself at $4 and people are willing to pay for it and, and businesses are like, hey, why are we going to cut back if everybody's already buying it? We're going to keep it at four bucks. It doesn't go back to two just because inflation came down. So a lot of these numbers that people are seeing and saying, oh, okay, because you, you're you looking at these things and saying, oh, the numbers are we're going through the roof. Uh, the, uh, the market's rallying, inflation's coming down. Uh, they're expected to cut rates soon and stuff like that. But on the flip side of that, you're reading about record credit card debt, uh, student loan squeezes and stuff as far as where people are not being able to um, uh, uh, pay their student loans record amount of repos on cars and stuff like that the highest amount of debt to income uh the highest amount of uh car payments to income ratios all this kind of stuff you're looking at the macros and saying okay well that's not good and then you say oh well inflation is coming down or inflation is stabilizing so we're headed in the right direction and you have to kind of overlay that um into the markets and kind of just say okay what does this mean uh in long term and in my opinion i do believe that we're probably going to see some stabilization, probably some, some some rallies here and there, but more so a lot of sideways movement, probably into after the election. Don't hold me to that. I know I'm, I know this is still uh, pretty pretty uh, premature, but that's my thinking as of right now. We're probably not going to see uh, them use the dreaded R word probably into after the election. I, I think this is kind of why we're seeing a lot of this. Uh, because you know, they didn't want to use to say that we're in a recession um, and now we're having this um, this rally here. And I'm not saying that uh, inflation is just as bad. Again, I want to reiterate, I'm not trying to be like a, a downer to this news or something. Uh, stabilization is certainly better than increase. Um, not as good as decrease, but it's certainly a step in the right direction. But don't uh, overshadow that and just assume that we are going to start back trending uh, downward to where we were. And another thing that we have to kind of factor in is we're still... We're, we're still sending out a lot of money. We're America because um, remember, and during the COVID times, people got I think a thousand dollar check and a six hundred dollar check, and it, it, they gave out like some PPP loans, uh, some some grants and stuff like that. And we saw the inflation from that, and now we are sending billions and billions and billions of dollars to several companies, uh, countries, excuse me, every single month. Uh, I think even Ukraine alone right now is over a hundred billion. Um, there's going to be inflation for that. There, that's not, you're not going to, because even if you send the money out, uh, technically it'll, because uh, you, you'll say, okay, well, if it's not here, it can be delayed because technically if it's here, you'll have, if, if they send the money to the citizens, it's here, then it has to be absorbed um, directly. But it's, a delay, it's certainly more delayed if you send it overseas, but all that money has to be accounted for, all right? That has to be paid for, you know, that is, it, it certainly comes out of the budget. There's going to be taxes for that. That certainly has a trickle down effect that may not be as immediate as the COVID inflation, but best believe that it's not uh, just magic money that's going to pop up, just disappear, and uh, there's not going to be an accounting for it. And I, I kind of I factor all these in where you're looking at different uh, articles and even with the, with the news. So I'm just kind of expecting that we're probably going to see some sideways movement and some rallies. We're we'll, we'll going to see some rallies here, but I don't expect any pivotal movements until probably after the election or unless we get like a full retracement from uh drone Powell, he actually comes out and says okay well we're finished and then of course that can probably spike us into uh bull run territory get us that 20 percent increase and we can start looking at some of those uh bigger uh those bigger targets here um uh, ultimately um because i still for those of you in the group and stuff you know that i still have i have like puts and i i did hedge here uh, just because and even yesterday when we we're giving out the plays and I was like, hey, I'm going to wait until after uh, this meeting here because something just in my gut told me <laughs> to not jump into the market yesterday just because uh, something like this may happen and it turned out to be uh, to be true. So uh, for those of you who are trading and investing, certainly make sure to kind of especially if you're going long term just because of the markets here, certainly make sure to hedge. Um, this does look this does put us in a positive light. Um, for now, so it's kind of you can probably expect it to be kind of like an upward trend until we get like some conflicting data. So, um, but as of right now, all of the experts and stuff like that have removed any rate hikes off the table. So you can expect a lot of pumping news to go on. So 
Um, we can probably go higher from here. Uh, so we may have a retracement, but ultimately I know the way that this is set up and the way that the news and stuff is going to be um, putting out information. This is probably going to start uh, pumping the market. So uh, just kind of be prepared for that. Uh, for those of you who are a little bit more skeptical than getting put um, with your time frames, because you can certainly uh, get wrecked due to time um, and with the information being put out in the space in between these meetings. So because a lot of the data and analysis, they're going to be writing articles all week about uh, where this is going to go from here, the new projections for the new bull market and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I'll keep you guys posted as we get additional data, because we do need to kind of confirm this uh, in the, uh, the macros here, because stabilization is, again, that's great. But we have to kind of confirm that in different sectors here, like um, the the work the middle class is doing, because the middle class, you can confirm it and say, oh, stabilization is great. Uh, the market is going to boom and stuff like that. But the middle class is obviously struggling and broke. And of course, we have the, the real estate sector as well with these. Because um, uh, even if we have these points here that unless we get a massive number of supply and maintain these higher interest rates on mortgages, um, we'd have to get a massive number of supply to kind of bring the price of the home down to make it make sense. Because if you're going to have record prices and record interest rates, um, it's going to you're going to end up in a situation kind of like we are now, where very few people can actually afford or even qualify for the mortgage it takes to get into these homes. So um, these are things that we're going to have to kind of look at to see um, is, is the underlying under, underlying tone uh, matches the data that we're giving here to say, okay, where well, we're going to see a pivot here where we can have. Uh, the retail sector even have extra money to invest and to get involved into the market and this kind of matches the, the data that's coming out so those are, these are things that we're going to be looking over the next few weeks of course i'll post an update video um, as i get information as i see things that um, are kind of changing or supporting or um you know uh, disapproving that would be the data that we have here and kind of give us an idea of the time frame that where we're going to see um that ascend or, or descend in the market so Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. I appreciate you guys for tuning in to my Fed meeting and my my rant. <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted and I will see you guys in the next video. And don't forget, uh, for those of you who like to trade, you're looking at uh, Mumu here. Um, you can get up to uh, 13 free, 15 free stocks, uh, depending on how much you deposit when you open an account. And you get 5.1% FDI insured uh, on your money that you hold in the account at while you're making your investment decisions. And I have a link in the description for them. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next video.